Oh, I agree. I think the new OTR Central logo is kick-ass. Kick-ass. Yeah, who did it? Oh, Toes Fu did. I think that's how the hell you say it. It doesn't matter. He made a kick-ass logo. You look at it, and it's got enough to it to where you take it seriously, but you can have some fun with it. You know, that's kind of what we're going for here with the whole operation, frankly. It looks like a younger Dustin Reynolds raging because somebody dared to ask him about his time as Black Rain in TNA. That's what it looks like to me. That's what it looks like to me. I'm going to tell you what. It's going to look awesome on a shirt. Yeah, the people don't even know the shirt's coming down the pike, and that's not all. There's going to be more than just that one design, I assure you. Yeah, you're going to have one. You better buy all of them, damn it. I don't pay you peanuts for nothing. But man, this whole off-the-rope show business, it's hard work. I put a lot of effort into this. A lot of my heart and soul into this. So give me a second. Let me get a quick pick-me-up. And we'll go ahead and get the show started, okay? All right, let me go. What? What? We're live? We're live right, like right now? God damn it, we're professionals here! Each and every single week, I'm made to look a fool here! Award-winning YWC journalists shouldn't have to put up with this Bush League bullshit! And we already know the deal, we talked about this a lot. When Mr. Lincoln gets rolled up, the camera stays dark because this is hard work and every once in a while, the Schlag Daddy needs a little pick-me-up. He needs some of his booger sugar. I got some stars in the sky? All right, we're good. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Off the Rope Show here on OTRS Central. I apologize for that unprofessional garbage because we are professionals here. You can be replaced and you shall be replaced. I am, of course... Your award-winning host, the Schleg Daddy, and today we've got an action-packed show. <laughs> Not really. We've got a thought-provoking show, and eh, maybe more likely. Today I'm going to talk about Al Snow and his comments about professional wrestling fans and his advice for professional wrestling fans that he hopes can help them enjoy the product more. And speaking of enjoying the product more, I'll be right back after this short commercial message. And we're clear? Are you sure? All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff Schlegel, and you may know me as an award-winning YWC journalist here on the Off the Rope Show and on this OTRS Central channel. And I come to you with one simple request today. Hashtag subscribe or die. If you have already subscribed to this channel, I thank you. Now it's time to spread the message, spread the word. Tell everybody on other YouTube wrestling videos, on Reddit, on social media, to hashtag subscribe or die to this OTRS Central channel. Because if everybody wants to be what I'm a part of this year, which is to hashtag make wrestling fun again, one piece of that component of that puzzle is to hashtag subscribe or die. If you haven't done so already, what I want you to do is take a look at that little subscribe button and click that damn thing. I promise you, you'll be thankful. Love me or hate me, I will always do my best to entertain you. This channel should be bigger, this channel should be better, and with the help of all of you, 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 it can be bigger better, bolder than it ever has been in 2017. The march to 15,000 subscribers is on, bitches! Hashtag subscribe or die. It's the only way to go. All right, everybody should subscribe or die to this channel. It's going to hashtag make wrestling fun again for all of us in 2017. But anyways, on to the topic at hand today, and that is Al Snow. And, and i got to say, I've actually always liked Al Snow. Always have, going back to the 90s, even when he was a part of, what, the new Midnight Rockers? <laughs> or the new Rockers or whatever the hell. We try to forget that. The hell was his name? Leaf something, whatever the case might be. I've always liked Al Snow, just something about him. As I look back at his ECW time, think about the concept. He took a mannequin head and ran with it. And got over huge with that crap with that ECW audience. That whole rave scene that was going on in the late 90s. Al Snow brought that to professional wrestling and always thought that was awesome. What does everybody want? Head. Like, I'll still randomly say that to people that I know are professional wrestling fans. I'll say, what does everybody want? And somebody will always shout out head. 
almost 20 years after the fact. That's pretty cool. You know, compliments to Al Snow for getting something over like that. A lot of people go their whole careers and can't be remembered for anything. And he is. Whether he wants to or not, that's what he's remembered for. And that's cool. And one of the great double-meaning sexual innuendos ever in the history of the business. Just phenomenal stuff. Uh, loved his work with the Job Squad. Made the Job Squad cool. Well, in part, it was him that helped make it cool. But I've always had an appreciation for guys that took something and didn't bitch about it, didn't complain about it, didn't half-ass it, see Terry Taylor Red Rooster type stuff, and actually go out there and try to get it over, get themselves over, get the gimmick over, try their best to entertain the people and take whatever they have, whether it's a turd or not, and shine it up and try to make as much gold out of it as they can. And I always felt like Al Snow did that. He always presented himself to me as a guy that whatever he was going to be handed, which always wasn't going to be good, he was going to do everything he could to get the most out of it. And to me, that is the epitome of a professional. I have the utmost respect for people that do that, like Al Snow. And in general, I've always felt like, over the years, Al Snow gets it uh, more than most people do, more importantly, in the professional wrestling business, which I would call the land of marks now. We want to talk about marks. The marks are in the business, not the ones in the seats watching the business. You know, some of the things he's talked about over the years through various shoot interviews and so forth. Talk about the seven deadly sins of a professional wrestling match. So on the money. Calling Meltzer the greatest worker in the history of the business. And frankly, he is. He's made six figures a year off of this crap for years, and he never wrestled for a major promotion. You know, he gets other people to put themselves on the line to spill information to him to gossip it to the fans. That is a great worker. Um... He talks about how the match that's the best is the match that draws the most money, that draws the house, not the match with the kicks and the flips and the spots and so on and so forth. His example, one of them, given WrestleMania three. You know, everybody talks about Steamboat and Savage, but the best match of the show, I agree, even if not from a pure wrestling standpoint, was Hogan and Andre, because honestly, that's what everybody remembers from that show. The hardcore fans, maybe not so much, but everybody even a casual understanding of professional wrestling knows something about Hogan and Andre in three. That was the big match. That's the money match. That's the match that drew the house. That's the best match on the card. He's always been an advocate for talking about doing more with less, making what you do count, making what you do matter, making what you do have consequence, meaning, and significance. And I'm down with all of that. You know, it's one thing to be able to sit there and go out and crash test dummy your body to all hell and back. But frankly, God, how much talent does that really take? You can go watch that crap in Backyard Feds. You can go watch that crap in a CZW or something. That doesn't make a good professional wrestling. I can go out in my backyard and do a bunch of flips and kicks and take a bunch of risks. But in no way, shape, or form does that mean I'm a good professional wrestler or any type of professional wrestler whatsoever. So... I've always felt like Al Snow gets it. He understands. He's not too full of his own BS. He's not too full of the fact of, well, I've been in the wrestling business, so I know better than you, even though he probably does. And at times, maybe he does allude to that, but he will also be quick to point out the flaws and the logic of those within the professional wrestling business and sometimes har non harbinger on that and talk about that. And point out the bullshit and the stupidity and all of that. So, nothing but respect for Al Snow. But the simple fact of the matter is, even people that you respect can say stupid things. The ceiling is the roof? Anybody? Anybody? What does that mean? Well, Michael Jeffrey Jordan said it, so it makes sense to me. But seriously, the ceiling is the roof. Come on, Al. Come on. Or, what somebody does, brother in the confines of his best friend's wife's bedroom brother, talking about people that aren't white brother, 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 oh, brother. Even the people you respect, even the heroes, the legends, the icons, those you look up to, those that you borderline worship, they can say and do some bad, dumb things. And in this particular case, with what Al Snow said, in terms of advice that he handed out, for professional wrestling fans, I get it. I understand it. 
And I realize the place that he's coming from. And in an ideal world, he's absolutely right. But the fact of the matter is, it's not an ideal world anymore. And wrestling doesn't work like that anymore. And it hasn't for a long time. And after this short break, I'm going to talk about just how flawed his advice is and maybe where the focus should be more. Ladies and gentlemen, the dick storm here, baby. And, and I got just one message to get across. Schleg daddy, I'm begging you. I'm pleading with you. You've got to watch Slammiversary. July 2nd, daddy. You know you miss Impact Wrestling, baby. You know you want impact back in your life, daddy. They got a black world champion. The cowboy James Storm about to be the next inductee into the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame. What more do you want? Well, I got it. Come on, Schleg daddy. And, and all of y'all, you got to go out there on social media and spread the word. Comments, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Tell them, hashtag watch impact. Hashtag watch slammiversary. But number one. Most importantly of all, Schleg Daddy, the founder's back. Jeff Jarrett's back, baby. And if for any other reason, just one more time, the Dick Stone, baby, wants to see you assume Jeff Jarrett position. Woo! Ride the Dick Stone, baby. I'm going to be watching Slammiversary on Sunday, July 2nd. And here's hoping that we can get the message to the Schleg Daddy, and he will too. And he'll even follow that up with a review, because we all know deep down, we all want that baby. Now before we go into what Al Snow actually said and where I disagree with it, let me say a couple of things. Number one, message to David Hero, please don't rally the hashtag super friends and come flying out to Richmond, Virginia to come find me and give me the old onesies, twosies workover, okay? We good? We good? Number two... Al, congrats, I'm getting married. I'm sorry, your life is now hell. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm not kidding. Juan! Anyways, to get to the point at hand here, and Al Snow's advice, and some of the things that he's recently said on Twitter, uh, let, let me kind of provide you with what he actually said, and then my responses to it, and hopefully what you'll get out of this is where maybe he's coming from a viewpoint that is understandable, but honestly, a viewpoint that is kind of dated and out of touch with the current wrestling reality, and also where we get to a place where we can be civil in terms of having different perspectives and disagreeing on things without having to call each other names and get into big time cyber wars, flaming keyboard fingers of fire, and all that bullshit, if you know what you mean. Uh, but here's something that Al Snow said that I thought was particularly interesting, to say the least. To wrestling fans, you enjoyed wrestling when you knew nothing about it. Go back to that, and it will be fun again. Stop being a pseudo-expert. And this was a tweet, I believe, that followed up a piece, a blip, that was in a Sports Illustrated article. And you know what? In part, I agree with him. I completely understand it. And he's right. And I could definitely agree with this going back to the time of the 80s, you know, the Hogan era, what you had going on with Jim Crockett promotions, um, when the AWA hadn't quite fallen off yet. You know, I can remember that time where I was a kid where I thought this shit was all in the up and up. It was 100% real. Everything was a shoot. You know, I remember how emotionally invested I got into it and how much I enjoyed it. I lived for professional wrestling as a little kid. You know, I, I, I did. But unfortunately, over the years, for a variety of reasons, via a variety of factors, we just can't pretend like we don't know some of the things that we know. We can't just mentally compartmentalize and block the stuff off and pretend like, hey, I'll pretend that I don't know this is what's going to happen that leads to this, that leads to this, that leads to that, and I'll be able to enjoy the show more. That, that just doesn't fly anymore. You can't just forget shit and pretend like you don't know. It's like when you sit there and you look at your girl's butt, and if you saw like a piece of toilet paper in there, like you know your girl poops. We like to pretend that they let out rainbows when it comes to that special time. But we know that everybody poops, but we don't necessarily like to think about it. You know, we like to get nasty about it and think about putting it in their butt, strictly for disciplinary reasons only, of course. 
But you don't want to see a piece of toilet paper, even like a little square of it in there, because then it reminds you of what that actual hole is used for, and then it just changes the perspective of everything. Unless you're a white guy, then you're just a nasty fucker anyway, so does it really make a difference, I guess. But honestly, talking about not knowing stuff and will enjoy the product more, if anything, I say bullshit to that, because by the time we got to the 90s and I was a teenager and then into my early 20s, I knew a lot of this shit, I knew what was up, I knew this shit was fake, and I enjoyed it as much in the mid to late 90s and early 2000s as I ever did as a little kid in the 80s and early 90s. So just because I knew what was up, or had some clue as to what was up, understood some of the workings, a lot of the workings, whatever the case might be, and in no way, shape, or form had to have a direct bearing on my ability to enjoy the product. That's just putting the focus and the blame in the wrong place. Like for years, everybody's known magic is an illusion. We all know it's a work. We all know ultimately it's a con. It's bullshit. It's whatever. But I still will enjoy a good magical performance if a good magician is a good magician. And I still enjoy watching good magicians work and perform. Even if I know how they're doing it or have an idea or a clue of how they're doing it, it doesn't matter. Because in part, it's still about the show aspect, the entertainment aspect, the performance aspect. And, and to this, I say respectfully to Al, that maybe instead of pointing fingers at fans, uh, point one at yourself and the industry as a whole first. Because if you're talking about people need to go back to when they didn't know anything about it so they can stop being pseudo-experts at familiarity breeds contempt, I don't disagree with that. But when what yourself and so many others have frankly been attention whores for so many years when it comes to doing shoot interviews and talking about this stuff on social media and so on and so forth, the fans are smartened up to the extent that they are because the wrestling business and the people in the wrestling business made it that way. Look, we've known wrestling is fake going back to the 30s. This crap has been exposed at least to a certain degree. But to the degree and level of which people know about certain things now is only because wrestlers were desperate for money and attention after the Monday Night Wars were over, and they started doing shoot interviews and spilling all these beans to the dirt sheets at unprecedented levels. So you're blaming the fans for stuff that is directly the fault of everybody involved in the wrestling business, frankly, including you, Al. And that's exactly what it is. This is like blame a politician blaming the media for covering the fact that they lied, or there was some type of scandal. Let's not focus on the lie, and let's not focus on the scandal. It doesn't matter, Democrat, Republican, it doesn't matter. We're going to blame the media and their coverage of it. The media is not the problem. Don't do and say stupid shit, and they won't have to cover you in that way, period. And it's that simple. If you don't want fans knowing all this crap, then stop spilling all the secrets. Like tweeting all of this advice to wrestlers that you know primarily it's fans that are following you that are going to see this. Another tweet you had. Your criticism is your opinion based off of what appeals to you and not a mass audience. You have no investment, just your time. Well, how? Isn't time the single most important investment and the costliest investment that any fan can make or anybody can make in general in their life? Because last time I checked... We can always, in theory, make more money. We can always do that. But the one thing we cannot do is get more time. We all have a finite amount of time, no matter what we try to do to change that. And as a result, that's the most precious commodity we have. So sit there and tell fans that they don't have anything invested is just bunk. Because we do. And that's not even going into the fact that a lot of fans go to shows... They spend time watching this on television. They buy merchandise. How are they not making an investment? And ultimately, isn't the fans' investment the most important part? Because without their eyeballs, without their money, there is no wrestling business? I mean, that's fundamentally what it comes down to. And is it the fans' fault that they're so focused on some of the things that are wrong with professional wrestling today? That they're not invested in the characters, the storylines, and the companies to the degree that once they were... Is it their fault that they're frustrated, or is it the wrestling business's fault and the people in the wrestling business's fault for making it this way? That's what I think. 
Let's blame the right parties and the right people here. And another thing Al said, you're certainly entitled to your opinion, but don't think it's more valid than a performer's. And in part, I get what he's saying. Like, somebody that's never wrestled, how can you sit there and tell somebody how to put together a match? But this is where I kind of get into the wrestling bubble and the disconnect from reality. Like, wrestling acts like this is some type of unique phenomenon in and of themselves, but people do this all the time. People have all these opinions about politics and about legislation that they don't read, that they don't understand, that they don't know about, but so many people form an opinion anyways. They've never been a politician, but they sure have an opinion about one. So many people are fans of sports teams, but they'll sit there and talk about this quarterback stinks, or they'll talk about this team needs to make this move or that move, or this general manager does this, or this team doesn't know how to run a draft board, whatever the case might be, and they've never actually done the job. But in no way, shape, or form does that necessarily mean that they can't in some way have an opinion about it. And this goes beyond just saying, hey, everybody's an entitled to an opinion. It goes beyond that. And frankly, if the customer's opinion doesn't matter, how is that good business? Isn't it the customer's opinion that ultimately matters most? You can sit there and think from a business perspective that you're doing something great and wonderful. But if the customer doesn't buy it and the customer isn't buying, then obviously something is wrong with your business model. It's like if I went to a club in Harlem, let's say a comedy club, and I performed some type of pro-Trump, anti-Obama uh, comedy routine. That shit's going to get over like a fart in church. I'm going to be lucky to get out of there with my ass intact. Is it the customer's fault? Or is it my fault for not understanding the audience that I was trying to reach? Is it my fault for being out of touch? And then he said something to the effect of watch thousands of hours of surgeries, but I'll never be a doctor. And I don't think anybody's saying this. This is just going in an entirely different direction. And, and furthermore, if we really want to break this down, Alan, you know from being somebody that's taught a lot of people over the years, it's the hardcore fans, it's the smarts, which I know is a term you don't like, but it's the hardcore wrestling nerds that are in the business now. That's part of the reason why the business has gotten so damn small. It's all these people that weren't good enough to be athletes in other spo real sports. They decide, hey, I love professional wrestling, I'm a nerd for it, so I'm 5'10", 190 pounds, I've seen some other guys do it, so I could do it now, and more of those type of guys get into the business. So, honestly, people like me, not me, at 36, but other people like me that are much younger, will sit there and approach wrestling like me, and they end up being in the business any damn ways. So to sit there and say that you've watched thousands of hours of surgeries, but you'll never be a doctor, that doesn't really apply in this particular case. And on top of that, if we're getting back to the thing of you have to know in order to know, have you ever criticized an airline? Have you ever criticized a cab driver, a restaurant, a store, a hotel, somebody else's wrestling product that you don't have direct intimate knowledge of? Dude, this is a fact of life. People have all types of opinions about things like iPhones, just as an example, but they have no clue about the inner workings of the iPhone or what the design model was or anything like that. They didn't see the blueprint in the schematics. They didn't help put it together. They didn't come up with the conceptual design, but they can still have an opinion about it. And sometimes you don't have to have an intimate knowledge of the inner workings of something to be able to formulate a solid opinion on it. Period. You don't. And, I, and now, mind you, as fans... I think sometimes we can be better at not being so rigid in the fact that our way and our preference is the only way because that's not the case. To me, wrestling should be the ultimate variety show. I do agree with this assessment that there should be something for everybody. If everybody can't be, get behind something, you'd love them to, but if they can't get behind something, then there needs to be something for everyone. And sometimes we get into this habit, and I sure do too, of acting like we're the only ones who know and our way is the only way, and that's not true at all. That's not the case. But it doesn't mean that we're wrong either. It doesn't mean that it isn't a part of it. It doesn't mean that we can't be right. And I do agree that as fans, and I'm certainly guilty of this, and as part of the thing of trying to hashtag make wrestling fun again here in 2017, is picking and choosing our criticisms better to avoid it all becoming white noise. Because if you complain about something all the time, eventually the message kind of gets lost. It's like for the people that have 
bitched and moaned and pissed and moaned about Cena for so many years, it got to the point the last couple of years where he started going off and doing different projects. People just don't complain the same way about him, and even the people that do criticize him, it just doesn't carry the same weight and the same muster, and they're going to get to that place with Roman Reigns eventually here too, is you get a diminishing return off of that complaint if it's always the same complaint time after time after time, if it doesn't evolve, if it doesn't change, if it doesn't grow in its scope, in its specter or anything like that it's going to be less effective. So I do agree with that. However, though, maybe wrestlers can be better at their fucking jobs. And I know that sounds harsh, but at the end of the day, if wrestlers were better at their fucking jobs, maybe the business would be better. Maybe writers, bookers, producers, agents, promoters, maybe they can and should be better at their fucking jobs. Instead of blaming fans and pointing to and criticizing the fans, to me, in the business world, in my career, I always have to look at it like this. Even though it's easy to blame somebody else or blame these mitigating factors or stuff that is out of my control, first and foremost, I have to look internally at myself. I have to look in the mirror at myself and say, what could I have done to be better? What could I have done to make this work? What could I have done to overcome this, that, or the other bullshit? And the bottom line is, blaming the fans is the type of attitude that has gotten the business to where it is, where there's not nearly the overall following, especially from a casual and mainstream perspective as there once was. We've gotten to the point where really you have to be a hardcore fan in order to enjoy it because you have to take it that seriously to see past a lot of the bullshit. And to sit there and tell fans that they need to pretend like they don't know anything about it and it'll be fun again, no, that's bullshit. How about wrestlers, the writers, the bookers, the producers, the agents, the promoters, how about they do their job better? How about they get better at their fucking job? Focusing on fans and what they do is counterproductive and a complete and total waste of time. And referencing what I said earlier, the most precious commodity we have is time. Don't waste it on bullshit. And pointing at the fans and talking about what they should do when the wrestling business has so much it needs to fix itself internally first is just dumb. Period. And frankly, it's one of these things where you got to focus on what you do first. That's what matters. And make it better. You'd be able to know that you make it better. You know, continuity, uh, character development, having people that actually know how to cut a microphone, having people that don't go paid by numbers A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 steps to a match type of bullshit. And if the fans don't come along, they don't, fuck them. But they will. If you make it what professional wrestling should be, not the glorified spot fest that it has become now, more casual mainstream fans will watch, more casual mainstream fans will enjoy. And eventually, those hardcore fans will get a reminder of how good professional wrestling used to be and can be once again, and frankly, they'll get on board too. Until then, stop telling fans what they should do, stop worrying about what fans need to do, and let's focus instead on what professional wrestling as a whole can do to make things better. That's my advice for Al Snow. Take it, leave it, do what you want with it. Nothing but respect for the guy. But again, I understand what he's saying. It's just out of touch and off the mark and frankly, not realistic. I hope everyone has enjoyed this video. I hope all of you got something out of it. And I hope all of you that did click on it, hashtag subscribe or die to this channel. And thank you once again for tuning in to another episode of the Off The Rope Show, where since 2010, we've been entertaining ourselves while you watch. And here to the OTRS Central channel, where it's not the wrestling show you want, it's the wrestling show you need. Goodbye, everybody.